Pleasant good morning to everybody. And may God bless you. This is the weekend that is after Thanksgiving.
this morning, there's uh, different requests that are heavy in my heart. And one that have come to my mind is uh, Sister Austin and Brother Austin. Sister Austin, I think, got rushed to the hospital last night. So let's let's continue to pray for her and lift her up. And uh, uh, just like uh, Lori was singing, God, with an all in three persons, He has He has all power and might, and He is our healer. And let's go before us to His throne. And anything that on your heart. Uh, join with me as, as I uh, go before the Lord. Dear Lord, it's once again we have the privilege, the honor, to come before your throne, Father. We thank you, Lord, that uh, you are our God, Father, that we can worship you in spirit and in truth. That, Lord, your word is spirit and power, Father. And as it goes over these airways and, and videos, Father, you can still accomplish your purpose, Father. You are amazing. Lord, you said you are at everywhere at all times and that you're here at this time. And we thank you, Father, this, that you are a great God. And you are a powerful God. You are a mighty God. Lord, you have all healing virtues within your hands, Father. And by Jesus' stripes, we are healed. And right now, Lord, we complain the healing, Father, for uh, Sister Austin, Lord, and she's in the hospital. Lord, you are the great physician. You can defeat this pestilence, this virus, Father. Right now, Lord, on her behalf, we uplift her to you. We place her in your hands. We rest that you are God and that you can do all things. And we know that you will touch her body and provide the healing, that you provide miraculous healing for Sister Austin. Be with Brother Austin, Father. Let him know that you're with him, comfort, consolate him. And Lord, when I think about everyone, Lord, that's under the sound of my voice, wherever they may be, they might have loved ones that have, have experienced dealing with this virus, Lord. We pray that you would comfort and consolate them, Father. They may have lost some life in their household, Lord, and empty chairs, Lord, around the, the, the dinner table at this Thanksgiving time, Father. We pray right now, Lord, that you would bless and be with them, that you would comfort and consolate them, Lord. And Lord, as we come before thee, Father, we know, Lord, that you know what's, what we're experiencing, Father. Lord, we come praying right now that you would go before this country, Father, that you would move throughout this land and the world, Father. We need a touch from you. We need a, a Lord, a, 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 a tool that would defeat Satan, that would defeat this pestilence, that would destroy this virus, to remove it from our presence, Father. And Lord, we would know, Father, that it was your faithfulness, your grace and your mercy that allowed it to happen. We thank you in advance for doing it. We pray to you for your victory, for the victory that you're going to give us. And we will always lift you up and make you our priority, Father. We pray right now that you and your blessing will be upon this service, that you will let your word be and your anointing be upon the, this, the speaker, our pastor, as he bring forth the word, that it will be a word for our hearts, Lord. Even though, Lord, we're not in this place, your word will reach out and touch us. We thank you and pray to you, Father, for doing this even now. We will forever we'll give you all the praise, the honor, and glory. And we ask this in the, in the name of your wonderful, precious, almighty Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. flesh and the wealth that is among us. And we thank God that is for his for his word. The apostle Paul said, woe is me if I preach not the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're going to have another song and after that we're going to hear the gospel. Amen. <laughs>
this morning. Thank you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that we can be healed and is in a pavilion of safety and that we can be blessed. We ask that you would come down and be with us as we look into your word. We thank you for every hearer that's here and we thank you for the speaker. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. I want to talk this morning on the subject, on the subject, yoke up with God. Yoke up, that is, with God, for his yoke is easy, and his burden, believe it or not, is light. Amen. Now, uh, first of all, we need to know what a yoke is. A yoke is a wooden beam that's normally used between a pair of oxen or other animals to enable them to pull together on a single load. When working in pairs, as oxen usually do, and, and some yokes are fitted, that is for the animal, that is for the concrete, the pulley, and all of that. Now, there's another yoke that the young people know of, and that is the yoke of an egg. That is the center and the yellow part that is of an egg. And I don't think much of uh, some of the younger people know about the, the yoke for the oxen and animals, but they do know about that yoke. Now, let's, let, let's see what the elements that is of this passage in this text is. As we look into the Word of God, Amen. Let's dissect them uh, to, to what is being said here that is in this text. Uh, what they mean to us. You understand? Now the first thing I see in the text, it says, it says, come to me. Come, come to me, to me. Not to anybody else now. He says, come to me. Jesus is talking. And, and that part of the text is the invitation. You understand? He extends an invitation that says, come to me. Now the second part, amen, is come to me, all you, all you, amen. And that's where, uh, I, I mean, that's where, where all of the who, uh, the who are, is invited. You become uh, specified, believe it or not. And uh, we know now, you know, who this invitation is directed to. All of you, all of you, believe it or not. And then we see the words, amen, who are weary. And who are heavy laden, who are burdened down, who has problems. And that is the condition, believe it or not, of those who are invited. Am I right? Now, 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 next he said that I will give you rest, which is the promise in the passage. You understand? Followed by the words, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. That portion is the instructions that is from Jesus. Amen. And then finally, we come to the words, for I am gentle and I'm humble that is in heart, he said. And that's the reason why we should come. We should come because he's gentle and he's humble in heart, believe it or not. Amen. And he can handle all these things that's going on in your life. And the result uh, in this text is that and you will find rest that is for your soul. Now, the answer to him is this. He said, he said this, believe it or not. He said that my yoke is easy. And my burden, believe it or not, is light. This is what Jesus is saying. Now, we, we're not talking about nobody else. He says, come, and if you come, you will be benefited, amen, to this whole process. This is what Jesus is saying. Now, now, if you don't get anything out of it, Jesus says, come, come, come. Am I right? Come, come to me. He says, come to me in a time of difficulty, in a time of sickness, in a time of decay, in a time of pandemic. You need to come. See, we understand that the invitation is given, amen, that says don't stop coming, but you need to continue to come. Come on. That's what he said. Amen. Well, 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 I, I, I went to the therapist. There's nothing wrong with that. I went to see uh, Dr. Supergood. There's nothing wrong with that. When I decided to go to a church, you understand, because I thought about religion and while I was in church, nothing seemed to happen. I didn't get better. Well, uh, 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 there's nothing wrong with that. You understand? You see, but maybe you were parking in the wrong spaces. You should have been coming to Jesus. And just in case you don't know it, you can sit up in church all your life and never come to Jesus. Never, never come to him. So he uses this and he says, come, come and your life will be better. Amen. Come and you'll never be the same. You'll be changed. Amen. You see, and this, this one songwriter said, I came to Jesus just as I was wounded, weary, and sad. But I found in him a resting place 
and he has made me what? He made me glad. You understand how you come to Jesus. Amen. If you want to come to Jesus, Romans 10 and 9 says you need to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead and thou shalt be saved. Well, then with a heart con conviction, amen, and then with a mouth uh, confession, you can be saved. You can be saved. Am I right? Amen. And so we need to be saved. A whole lot of people need to be saved because there are many yokes that they can do, that they can come under. Yokes, yokes. There's the yoke of death. There's the yoke of wrong relationships. Am I right? There's the yoke of you not knowing how to do what to make decisions. Your decision making. But when you heard me say before, it's broken. Now, now, which of these words describe you? Amen. The yoke. Amen. That you're carrying right now is not a yoke you cannot feel, but you feel the yoke. You feel the yoke. Yes, you do. You feel the yoke. The yoke that you are carrying, it, you feel it. And guess what? Some people been carrying one all of their lives, and they know they feel it. That is every day. Am I right about it? They are feeling the yoke. Amen. And I'm talking about uh, uh, something you wake up with. I'm talking about something you go to sleep with. Something you walk and talk with. I'm talking about something you almost wear around your neck during the day. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? But he said, he said that whoever you are, if you're tired, weary, you discourage, you're burdened, you're hopeless, and you're helpless. And, amen. You feel like giving up. And all of these things are, but there are some pressures of life. That we can feel. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? And you're weighted down with that heavy load. And in many cases, amen, it's a load of sin that you cannot escape. But Jesus himself said, come on in now. You just didn't come. You didn't come to Jesus. You understand? The fact is couldn't help you. Because you don't want to go to Jesus. You understand? You park in the wrong parking space. But you need to get out of your car and you need to come to Jesus. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Now, many people are described by those words, you understand? You see, they, 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 they're buried. They're buried all kind of burden. Amen. But it's just to know, good to know, that Jesus not only is the yoke maker, but he's the yoke breaker. Amen. None other than Jesus Christ. Now, the yoke is designed for two animals. Now, Jesus said that if you yoke up with me, I will be on one side and you will be on the other side. And we'll do what? We'll pull together. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Amen. You see? You see? Now, nobody, 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 nobody in that day didn't know what a yoke was. Amen. They knew that two animals together had to pull together in order to do what? In order to do more work. They had to pull together. And they had to pull as one. And again, you understand? Here is what he's saying. He's saying, yoke up with me. Amen. We, we're pulling together. Amen. And then we can get our relationship together. We can get everything done together if you would yoke up with me. Amen. You see, and when you receive me and receive the salvation, you yield, he said to me, being Lord of your life. And I will bear that is a greater part of the burden, believe it or not, amen, that you feel it, you understand, because this is the help that you need. Jesus' yoke is a kind of yoke that can set you free. Amen. Oh, and we need to be set free. Yes, you do. You need to be set free. It's general. It's, it's, it's a general thinking for people to think that they can do things on their own. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You understand? You see? You see? And, and, and the thing about it is, uh, 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 Jesus is going to make the difference in your life. Amen. Because most people are unhappy these days. They are very, very unhappy. Very unhappy about what? Some things in life. Some things that they would like to change. Some things they would like to get rid of. Still change some things that they have, some things they don't have. Amen. But I'm so glad that Jesus lived in the uh, same society that I lived in. They had slavery, hardship. Amen. They had unfairness and death, suffering, and all of that. So he calls the people together and says, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Sit at the feet of Jesus. And you will learn something. He said, stop thinking you know everything. You don't. You don't. You don't. I'm sorry, but you don't. But he said, if you would sit at the feet of me, then you could learn. You could learn something. 
How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? He said that I have a yoke and I'm going to do what? I'm going to be uh, right beside you, helping you to bear the burden yourself. You understand the heartache, the trial, and the disappointment, believe it or not. Jesus said that I don't want you going to bed at night, waking up trouble. I don't want you tossing and turning at night, believe it or not. Amen. Amen. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We belong to Jesus, and he wants to set you free. And if you come to Jesus, you'll be like me sometimes. You'll sleep so good at night until you think you've got to pay to wake up. All you got to do is know what it is to come to Jesus. And guess what? He'll give you the peace that in a contentment that you never seen before in your life. Everybody that sits up in the church, they come to church, but they have not yet come to Jesus. I wish somebody would say amen. Amen. A lot of folks ain't saved now. Everybody that pushes the door open to the church is not saved. And they need to what? Jesus said, come on. Come on. That's what he said. He said, come and I'll give you rest. That's what he said. Because he knows how frustrated we are. He knows how hopeless we are. He knows how confused we are. Amen. Am I, am I right about that? And then he said that I will give you rest. Amen. And if I'm at rest, he said, I'm not troubled. And if I'm at rest, I'm not weary. And if I'm at rest, you understand, I have peace on the inside. Then the question is, can you say that you're a peaceful person? Can you actually say that you are a peaceful person? Well, this person is so calm and laid back. That don't mean that there's, there's no storm going on on the inside. Right. Don't fool yourself. That has nothing to do with what's going on on the inside. Do you have peace and confidence? Are you like most people who are troubled about everything? You understand? And so you can't say that you have peace. Amen. And you have a rest with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And drugs and alcohol and sexual relationship didn't satisfy you. Why? Because God didn't make them to. Didn't make them to satisfy you. Am I right about that? He made you for himself. It is he that had made me and not me, myself. We are his people and you sheep of his pastor. Amen. The earth is the Lord. You ain't got it yet? In the fullness there. Uh, you belong to Christ. It's a say and you've been bought. You've been bought with a price. Amen. We still don't get this thing about yoking up. You don't belong to yourself. What is going to satisfy you? He says, take my yoke upon you. Amen. Because I want you to do what? I want you to get help and I want you to walk with me. Amen. And I want to see you through. You don't need to wake up all the laden with sadness and pain. Amen. And feeling guilty. That's another thing. Some of you all have been feeling guilty for years. You need to get rid of the guilt. You understand? I don't want you to be weary and tired. I don't want you to have a relationship. Amen. Uh, relationships that are not Godly, you understand? I don't want you around here stealing. I want you to be in temperature about whatever goes on. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? But you need to yoke up with God. Amen. And then you can wake up in the morning, amen, with that assurance of the power of God working in your life. Jesus said, a meek and a lowly in heart, and you can find rest with not only for your body, he says, for your soul. Amen. And here's what he's saying. He's saying, when you join up with me, when you yoke up with me, and when you and when you join up with me, things will do what? Change. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. And I will help you to bear that heavy load because what? I'm a burden bearer. And I'm a heavy load sharer. You understand? So take my yoke. Take my yoke upon you. Because everybody's yoke is either something or somebody. You got a yoke. It's either something, think about it now, or somebody. Something somebody didn't do. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? It's either something or somebody. Amen. So who is it and what is it? Am I right? And Jesus said, submit yourself unto me. Amen. And watch what we can do together. Amen. And we cannot 
you cannot do what you want to do alone in Christ. Because he's the one that's what? He's the one that carries the load. Amen. And he shows us the way. Take, take my yoke upon you and learn me. Amen. Learn how I work, how I operate. Learn the things of me. Learn and I will give you rest for your soul. Your soul. The songwriter said, I found, he said, he said, I found the Lord and he is mine. He won me by his love. I served him all my years of time and dwell with him above. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. I found the soul. I found the soul. His service is my sweetest. That is the light. This is the song we say all the time. No, we don't say it all the time no more. And then his burden overflow. I got to get out of here now. Good morning. But you know what? I'm so glad that we all found a friend in Jesus. Amen. That will stick closer than a brother. A friend that will love at all times. A friend that won't pour water on a drowning man. I'm talking about a friend that won't throw in the towel when you're going through trouble. You see, a friend that's willing to do what? Willing to tell the truth and to tell you when your socks stick. I'm talking about a real friend. Well, well what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and greed to bear. What a privilege to carry. Everything, I'm talking about everything, everything. You got a request? We want to know everything. Why do you leave stuff out? You got a testimony. We need to know everything because we need to take everything to God in prayer. What a friend, what a friend we have in Jesus. I love the Lord. How many of y'all love the Lord this morning? You love Jesus. How many of y'all love the Lord? He's a bad bearer. And he's willing to carry your burden. He's willing to yoke up with you. He's going to pull his load. He'll pull your load every night and day. What you're saying is, he'll pull a double load every night and day. Because all you got to do is what? Just yoke up with him. He says, come. He says, come. And everything will change. He says, come. And you'll never be the same. He says,
Pastor, and if you're out in that audience and you're watching this telecast on today, we just want you to be encouraged in the Lord, knowing that God's able to do anything but fail. Mm -hmm. We just ask you again, if you're a person watching, if you want to give to this ministry, we use give a fire and give you to give a fire. Or you can put a check in the mail, 17401 Joseph Combo, 248212. Thank you again. We praise you. We bless you. And hopefully, through this Advent season, you guys will reflect on a God who's able to do what we think we're there. Shall we be? I mean, Father, we thank you. We thank you that we can call on your name, Lord, in the midst of trouble. We don't have to be burdened, Lord. We don't have to carry it by ourselves. But we can call on your name. But you said that, Lord, you would take, take that burden and carry it from us. We thank you. We praise you again for this day that you live me, Lord. We thank you for this season that we were embarking upon. God, we ask you to continue to we'll reflect on you. Have your way, Lord, in each of our lives. And, Lord, we'll give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. For your name is truly worthy of all the praise. For in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.